is CGTN, China Global Television Network. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to ravage through the world, forcing many countries into multiple lockdowns, in Kenya, five individuals who had qualified for the already postponed Tokyo 2020 Olympics are continuing to sharpen their skills. Christine Ongare is a boxer who has qualified for her first ever Olympic Games. Her coach, David Munuhe, is on his second stint, having featured in the 2016 edition. For rugby coach Felix Olo and Kenya's women's sevens captain Philadelphia Orlando, this is a chance for the team to go a step further in the tournament. While for Mutile Yavi, who switched citizenship from Kenya to Bahrain, this is a chance to prove herself as an elite runner after failing to make the Kenya Youth Athletics team. Unlike when she was at the training camp, Mutile has to maintain her fitness alone. So right in front of her parents' house, she has found a space that she uses to train. She has even handmade her own steeplechase obstacles. Uh, my coach and my boss told me I should go for more training and they looked for a training camp uh, in Eldoret. They used to show me how to do the hurdles. I used to have my hurdles of my own uh, in the training camp, but I didn't carry them right here at home because I was expecting to go back. One day, uh, at the end, end, end of uh, five, uh, five years, I happened to send Motile to the shop, which is about uh, one kilometer from here. So, later, just within a few minutes, I just met her here. I asked her, why have you, why have you uh, not gone to the place where I've sent you? She told me I've gone and I'm back. <laughs> so um, I was so sorry. <laughs> Mutile is the last born in a family of five children, one boy and four girls. She loved running and outdid her schoolmates to represent her region in the national championships. I remember in our national athletics, Nakoro, she ran, she was running bare, bare foot with the socks on. She came back eighth in the race, but her talent was spotted. That's now I met uh, my that teacher when we were in Nakoro. He told me, this is a good investment, my, my friend. Although I don't know you, let me tell you, focus on this guy. Although struggling with a salary as a government agronomist, Mr. Yavi raised her daughter's fees in installments to have her go to a talent school in Nairobi. At the national championships to select the team that would run for Kenya at the World Junior Championship, Mutile, then 16 years, came forth. She could not be selected to run for the national team and feeling she had potential to win, she took the offer that was presented to join Bahrain. I, w I was ready to run for my country, but I found it difficult to make the team. That's why I decided to, to do other countries. But I, my friends motivated me because there were some of them who were still uh, running for that country. And uh, they advised me, it's okay, you can go and run, you, they treat people well, 
and my boss accepted my my coach also accepted my, and my parents too accepted me to go to Bari. I was not moving then the Uganda girl got me. You'd have to suggest if she can maintain this, that is potentially coming under Soon, some... Soon, Tilly was running against her former Kenyan compatriots at the World Junior Championships and returned in position four. But at the Asia and Arab Games, she beat all competition to win gold medals. It's 5 a.m. in Nairobi, and Kenyans have adapted to working around the restrictions. By 5.30 a.m., Philadelphia has made her way into Nairobi's city center. She has discovered that across town, about an hour's drive from her house in eastern Nairobi, there is an open gym. Her friend is operating it with the necessary COVID-19 precautions. She is the first one in and soon starts with a warm-up at the rooftop of the gym before settling into her workout. The owner of the gym there and the, the ladies I'll meet there, I think I was also a blessing to them because they'll see me lifting weight, you know. Not all women go to the gym and like they want to lift weight. They saw me doing weights and say, oh, so we can also lift. I said, yes, yeah. I won't be muscular then. I was like, no. You'll just get fit, your body will be firm, you look good. Philadelphia is independent in her training. But still, she has to report her progress to coach Felix. During the quarantine period, Felix spends his days following up via phone and WhatsApp the different players' training progress. Naona Jules, Naona Kalimera, I'm also Kalimera. Agenda, agenda to get to to tattoo. For me, it's positive. Though I can read in between the lines, those who've been working, those who've not been working, I can see it from the, from the way they are reacting. Face to face, uh, that eye contact thing is usually very important. To me, the meeting was positive. So, I have a place, coach, with a B2, and you can see it from the top of the ningerada. I'm now 96 kgs. 96 so kgs. Wow. Well done. <laughs> Felix understands players and knows how to handle them well. Having been a primary school teacher handling children from less fortunate backgrounds, Felix can relate because he too came from a very harsh background. The other thing that we discussed about, and I think it's important to note, Shamba boy. Gardener. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Here's a situation whereby your parents have told you uh, no breakfast, no lunch, no supper. And they can't steal. I went to, to the stage, the bus stage. Uh, they used to gamble. Go up there, try to gamble, playing cards. Then it, it, it wasn't really nice. So I had to think of doing something else where people are not seeing me. So I just decided to have a walk in Milimani Estates. Then here I meet a guy who is like, they are looking for a guy who can do the work. And so that's the time I had to put my egos down, my pride down. Uh, do you mind if I come to do the job? And that was it. Noting his passion for teaching, two lady missionaries agreed to pay his school fees to enable him attend a teacher's college. Upon graduation and on his first teaching job, Felix got an opportunity to take some of his boys to play rugby at a tournament in the United Kingdom. While there, he discovered that girls also played rugby. 2011, we lost in the finals against South Africa. And that's the place I saw girls playing rugby. And I was like, oh, when I'm going back, girls must play rugby. Upon his return, he set up a girls rugby team that went on to become champions. His consistency in winning was rewarded with the job of coaching the Kenya women's sevens team. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, in Nairobi, Christine is wading through the rush hour traffic as she makes her way to the gym. It's a chaotic morning, but she still fights her way through the traffic and maddening crowds. Because of the pandemic restrictions, only Christine and Coach David can be at the gym at any given time. And while here, they must maintain social distance and avoid any contact. So no sparring and pads, only individual routines. They train uh, individually, but when we come together, you see it's just about observation. There are things that you can't do. There's shadow boxing you'll have to do alone. And uh, we are trying not to be caught and hit when the things is uh, open uh, ultimately. When I'm starting a new week, I do the long runs. The far I can go is 30 kilometers. Uh, and I face a lot of challenges training those long runs. You can find some dogs, they chase you up because they are not used to see people running. You find other people on the road looking after you. Some can discourage you, but I don't listen, listen to them. I keep on my training. I do long runs to keep my body form. I can do and keep my form for a long period. After doing the long runs in the morning, Mutile hangs out with her sister and nephew and also helps out with some household chores. You know, in training camps, I'm used to do my training. I take a nap, I take enough rest. But when I come home, you know, it is difficult for me. After my training, I can't uh, get enough recovery because I always help my father. I keep on doing work, so I don't rest after my trainings when I'm here at home. Athletics has never been popular in Mutile's part of the world. The progressive county government is, however, constructing a standard 30,000-seat sports stadium. This project is just in its early stages. In the meantime, Mutile has to make do with a local open field. But before getting on with the training, she must negotiate with a local security firm and a local boys' soccer team that use the field as their training ground. Reluctantly, they leave. Since Mutile has no fancy cones, she uses shrubs and stones to mark four corners of the field, which she will use for her diagonal runs. In a bit, she's off. For a whole hour, Mutile will focus on this until she feels she has completed her task. Soon, it's time for a stretch and cool down. Here, there are no fancy changing rooms with mirrors. Mutile has completed her routine for the day. If it were not for the pandemic, on this day, she would have been preparing for the first heat of her discipline. Tomorrow, she will return to pick up. Lisa, 
the wife material Philadelphia comes from a large family. Her father had six wives and her mom, wife number three, had six children. But unfortunately, she died while giving birth to her youngest sister. We are men in number, like 30 kids. I think my, my dad nailed it there. <laughs> then I think if we had turned aside, we love like three teams. Since there were so many children, her dad could not manage to care for all of them adequately. So with the earnings from rugby, Philadelphia became like a parent and started to raise her sisters, who were all school-going girls. Now two are married and have their own homes, while another is expecting a baby. So being the breadwinner in the family, you must be very disciplined. Uh, you must carry yourself as, as that leader as that mother figure to them. I think also sport has played a big role in my life uh, in terms of discipline and how to handle my sisters. Having them around, I think of the ladies also in the pitch. So when I come home and I see them, they are my strength and they're always my hope and joy to work hard every day. So I'll always put my best foot forward and see like they don't like, they, they don't lack anything. Felix, on the other hand, is building the future of youth at the Christian Center that has employed him for the last 12 years. His visit to the center finds an aggressive session of touch rugby in progress. Most of these young boys are from very poor backgrounds and rugby is a fine way of release for them. After Felix finished his teacher training, the missionary who had given him the gardener job hired him as a teacher of this children's home. The New Life Christian home is for both boys and girls. Most of the children here would be street kids without any hope. But here, they have found a home with clean dormitories, TV, and enough space to learn and grow. Although the pandemic has caused the closure of the school, the boys still find time to play an enticing game of rugby. And Felix, ever the coach, is more than happy to constantly share tips of what he knows with them. For new life, rugby is everything. Uh, you wait when schools are open, you won't believe it. Yeah, they will play in that dust. Even now, it's much better. There was cocotto, maram, these hard stuff, the hardcore. Yeah, that's what was there. But new life is changing their lives massively. Not only in rugby, but also this other stuff. As part of her training, Mutile wants to build up on her endurance and power. For the endurance exercise, she's running up the 14 winding hills towards Water Town, an eight kilometer stretch of steep climb. Later on, she heads to the gym where she will work on strengthening up her muscles. She's already a professional athlete, having to mainly think of her sports discipline and how to make herself better. Uh, running has made a big difference in me. I have done a lot to my parents. I have uh, my own apartments. I have a lot of plots in around in my village, in the nearby, nearby towns. Athletics is just a matter of years, it's not uh, like academic where you eat until you are, you are to the soil. So there's time flow. So and, uh, and I would encourage her to use that time well to invest in for future benefits. Mutile is building her next set of rental houses. About eight units of studio apartments on the small patch of land that she bought. 
you know the most uh, rich people i came to realize are the business people and you know business is all about gaining the profit you can't lose anything so that's why i i do prefer business Christine's neighborhood had been hit hard by the pandemic. Kariobangi is a low-income region in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Most of the residents here are employed as casual laborers and depend on daily wages. It is market day, and after her morning practice sessions, Christine proceeds to the market to purchase supplies for the small business they run with her mom. Biashara ni tu ya simsim. Asa mimi na mimi nikaongezea nyanya, kitungu na ndizi. Si rahisi ju kama mimi ni kitu yenye uwezi sema ati unapata dividend ile ati nakusaidia poa sana. So, Pia is under challenges, but to not let them move on. After sorting out the purchases, they are ready to open the small kiosk that they own. While there's the looming threat of catching the disease all around, the greater worry is hunger, since there is no tangible income. So, everyone, including Christine and her mother, have to continue opening their small businesses. With her busy training schedule, Philadelphia still has time to connect with her sisters. Today, she's preparing to go visit her sister who has just given birth to the newest member of her family. You know, now me being into sport and also supporting them, uh, I've dedicated my life to them and sport. I've not had that time of family getting a baby or settling in and all that because I was thinking of if I get a baby now, my focus will shift to my baby and I'll forget about my siblings and all that. My sister is full of light. She told me that I'm going to have a baby girl and I was so excited. I say, okay, that's awesome. And I told her, like, your baby will play rugby. And she was like, hey, that game is rough for my child, and I don't think. So we started discussing more about the baby thing and all that. So when we were talking and making the speech, my other sister talking, and I felt very good and emotional at the same time when they said, like, uh, I'd played the role that they never expected me that I'll play. Uh, this was meant to be a surprise to you, but I'm going to name my daughter after, after you, that you've been a blessing to us. I didn't see it coming and I didn't expect that. That made me feel like uh, in everything you do, appreciate your family, give them whatever you can when you have, or if you can help them, be it advice, be it love, anything, do it yeah, and stand with them. <laughs> After eight months of lockdown conditions, the Kenyan government has decided to ease the restrictions for some sports. For Mutile, it is the first time in many months since she last trained inside a stadium. Today was my first time to come to Inyayo Stadium. It has been like seven months without training in a stadium. I was just feeling the tension, you know. I just kept on training. We were training like in the morning and in the evening. And I'm really, really happy because I'm near my coach. We can train together. I have my teammates also. So we are used to train together. Mutile, you know, Mutile now, she is now becoming senior. She has now international athletes. She met men and she has more experience than the other athletes. Mutile is very disciplined. I believe on her. In training, no problem with Mutile. 
That's why she is performing well. Christine and Coach David are also back to training. Unfortunately, the government has still imposed certain restrictions on contact as a way to curb the spread of the disease. Mwenye tuliambwa tunarudi training nilisikia poa kwa sababu pia ku train peke yako kuna venye una ile morali ya team ama unasusia. Kwa sasa hizi venye tumerudi tulikuwa tumeanza na na strength kwa sababu coach anajua weakness ya kila mmoja wetu so tumekuwa tukidil na strength juu bado gavai japitisha sparring na kushikiwa pads kwa maana tume follow up tume nini tume rely kwa strength mostly you see when uh, one thinks that he has qualified or she has qualified and uh, now she can relax that's a very bad uh, and a very risky attitude we are telling them to train as if they have not qualified now they are focusing purely to Tokyo. At least now this COVID has given us time, we have assembled, and we can't complain about time. It's only for us to use it the way it's supposed to be. Philadelphia is also back in training but not in a usual sport of rugby. Rather, as the fitness and conditioning coach of a women's volleyball team. When we resumed to train for the first time, it was very difficult because uh, we had stayed home for more than six months. And you know, uh, our body type as women is very, very crazy. So like, you know, you're at home just eating. In as much as you're doing individual workouts, it was not that easy for most of the players. I'm missing actually my, my old routine. I was like living rugby life and volleyball life. So I'd wake up in the morning, go play rugby, then after move to volleyball. But now I have to now stick with one. But the bigger picture of my life is rugby. I really miss playing and uh, now that I'm fully recovered, I, I feel like I need to, to be doing something with the ball. I need to be in the pitch. Sometimes when the boys are in the field, so whenever they pop in and I'm with the volleyball girls, we just pick the rugby ball. I try to remember that rugby is still on and we're still trying to catch if we can still catch and pass or we've forgotten everything because nine months is not a joke. I'm just hoping that things will get better. We go back now to our normal training routine. As the athletes continue to adapt into the new normal, a second wave of the pandemic is hitting many countries. In Kenya, the National Olympic Committee of Kenya is still pushing the government to allow all Olympic qualified disciplines to get back to training. While the athletes' focus is still on their Olympic dreams deferred, it is an uncertain weight on how they will fare when they actually participate in the Games, now firmly scheduled for June 2021.